I will speak about uh, density in sphere packing. So I think it's the, the first talk uh, about this. I have seen that there is another talk by uh, Jen Zhang, uh, maybe tomorrow, about density. Uh, so I will motivate the talk. Okay, I have some green frame on the screen. I don't know if you have it. Is it better like this or better like this? Um, maybe without the, maybe the, the other option. The other option, like this. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so the problem I'm interested in, you have a, a given collection of a sphere or disk, that is, a, you have given size of this, say R1 to RK, and you want to know what is the, the maximal density that you can achieve, and how do look the, the packing with the maximal density. Okay, so since density have not been defined, it's just you you consider say a, a big square and you consider the proportion of this square which is covered by your disk and then you extend the size of the square. Okay, so I work in the, in the Euclidean space, Euclidean plane say, so it's uh, the most simple case. And I have some uh, example here on the screen which are uh, taken from, uh, from chemistry. Uh, there are people who, who do um, nanoparticle, which are which look like a disk, and uh, for some reason uh, it seems that uh, they make a nice pattern like this. So I have different example, uh, and as we will see in each of these cases, the structure that you get is the one which maximizes uh, the density. So maybe there are some uh, physical explanation behind this. Okay, so I have three parts in my talk. The first one, I will, I will do some uh, general introduction to the, what I call the localization problem. Is, uh, this problem is uh, you want to prove the maximal density of a packing, but a packing is something infinite. So how can you reduce this to some uh, local problem in order to, to, uh, to have a proof? Then I will speak about um, the M localization, which is a specific localization function. And if I have time, I would like to speak about uh, what we can do better than the M localization. Okay, so first localization. So I start with the simplest case. It's the case of only one circle. So there is a, a theorem which is uh, due to Laszlo Fejestot and maybe to Axel II before, but I ne never seen the paper and it's not clear how it is proven. Okay, the, the theorem is the following. Mm. If you consider a packing by circle, which are unit circles, say, in the Euclidean plane, and then you take a triangulation of the center of the disk, and more precisely, you take a Delaunay triangulation. So the thing we need for the Delaunay triangulation is just that uh, uh, the triangles are more or less uh, reasonable. They are more or less compact. Uh, formally, it's just that the circumscribed circle contains no other point, uh, no point inside uh, in, the, in its interior, sorry. Okay. And then the theorem says that uh, the densest possible triangle in this triangulation is the one which is equilateral with a three mutually tangent disk. Okay, so you can compute the density in this triangle and it gives you an upper bound on the, the maximal density that you can achieve in the whole plane. And actually it's, uh, the bound is tight because uh, it's not hard to see that this triangle tiles the plane. It's just uh, you tile like the, the you get the, the, what is called the hexagonal compact packing. And the density is the same in each triangle. And it is a pi over uh, square root of 12. Okay, so I guess many of, of you know already this, uh, this example and the proof behind. But the point I want to, to emphasize here is that the, the maximal density is derived quite locally. I mean, to, to prove that this packing is the densest one, we just prove that in, in each triangle, it is the densest one. So Thomas, there's a, 
question yeah. in the chat are you always working in dimension two here uh two or three okay maybe more but uh, already in dimension two we have problem okay so let, let's say two may sometimes three say you're not eight and not 24 uh, until the end of the talk So another example is with two circles. So you have two different sides of circle, a large one, which is yellow on my slide and a small one, which is blue. And there is a theorem, which is uh, the, the analog of the theorem of uh, Fejestot due to Florian, which says that in a Delaunay triangulation of the center of a packing, oh, I forget to say what is a saturated packing. It's some, some stupid thing, it's just a packing where you cannot add any more disk or sphere okay it, it is a uh, obviously if you can add this you can increase the density so uh, there is no loss of generality to assume that you cannot add the disk okay since you want to bounce from above the density so florian says that the the densest possible triangle is this uh, this small triangle with uh, which connects the center of a large circle as the center of two small circles Okay, so same as for uh, the previous slide, you have an upper bound, but unfortunately you, the bound is not tight because this triangle, you can never have a packing uh, so that you have only such triangle. Okay, in other words, this triangle doesn't not tile the plane. Uh, so I, I can give a short argument. Uh, if you have, assume you have only such triangle, then you consider a, a small disk, a blue disk. There are only such triangles, so the, the other disk around my blue disk must alternate yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, and so on. Since the blue disk is smaller than the yellow one, the angle in the blue disk in this triangle is larger than P over three. So I can have at most four disks, actually five, but if you want to alternate the two colors, it's uh, only four. Uh, to have two disks is impossible. Three is impossible because you cannot alternate the color. So it must be four. But if you, you take your pencil, you, you make a picture, a small disk and around it a small, large, small, large, then you see it's impossible because it will require that the, the large disk have an infinite radius. Okay, so you, you cannot achieve this bound. It's just an upper bound. Okay, so if you want to, to, to prove a, a maximal density for, a, for a, some specific case, you have to be not that local to not only uh, uh, consider a single triangle to, to prove the maximal density inside a single triangle. Okay, so now in a three dimension, since uh, uh, some people want to have more than two dimension, so the, the most simple case, which is not that simple, is one sphere in R to the three. Okay, and there is a, a, some theorem, which are again, the analog of the previous one. You have your packing saturated in the space and you consider Delaunay tetrahedrization. This is a, a decomposition in tetrahedron of uh, the space. And the, the, the theorem says that the densest possible tetrahedron is regular, is a regular one. Okay, again, you have an upper bound, but you don't have a tile bound because as you know, the regular uh, tetrahedron do not tile uh, the space. Um, actually, when I wrote this slide, I'm not quite sure about the, the previous theorem. I, I guess uh, it should be true, but uh, um, Thomas Hals has an, uh, another theorem which says that uh, it con he considers not the Delaunay tetrahedralization, but the Voronoi decomposition. So what the Voronoi diagram of, uh, of uh, a packing is just you associate to each sphere uh, the points in the sp space which are close, uh, closer to this sphere uh, than to the other. Okay, so in, in the case uh, you have only unit sphere, uh, it is a uh, polytops, and the natural equation is uh, okay, what is the, the densest one, the densest cells that I can have? 
And the theorem of Hall says that it is a regular dodecahedron. Again, it gives an upper bound, which is better than the previous theorem, it's because I don't really care if it is true or not, the previous one. But again, the problem remains because uh, because the uh, regular dodecahedron is like the tetrahedron regular. They do not tile the space, so you cannot achieve this density. Okay, so of course you recognize uh, the Kepler conjecture. It's uh, a bound on the uh, Kepler conjecture, but uh, you know that the, the best packing uh, in the conjecture by Kepler, if you look the the Voronoi cells, it's, it's dodecahedra, but they are not regular. It's a rhombic dodecahedra. Okay, so the, the main point I want here to, to emphasize again is that for one sphere in S3, the proof is not that local. You cannot just prove that the, the tetrahedron or the Voronoi is the densest one and then uh, get your, uh, your tight bound by uh, tiling the space with this cell. You, you have to, to show that, uh, okay, maybe locally you can do better, but then you will have some problems. So it's impossible and it's better to, to do not uh, locally better to achieve the best density globally. Okay, so it's what uh, I would like to formalize today. So I'm more or less following a, a paper by uh, Lagarias in 2002. Uh, I'm a bit less formal, but you can refer to this paper. It's a good work of Lagarias to present the proof of the of Thomas Hals and the Samuel Ferguson of the Kepler conjecture. Okay, so to define localization, I need to define what is a, a waiting rule. So you consider some packing of uh, of the space or uh, or the plane. Uh, you can any take any dimension if you want. I, I will say I think sphere more or less more uh, more generally. You partition the space into into some uh, bounded uh, polytopes or region. Okay, so each uh, each polytope corresponds to a sphere, and you assign to each cell, what is called a weight. So the weight is uh, informally, it's more or less related to the empty volume your cell contains. Okay, if you, if you have a, a cell uh, where uh, there is a lot of empty space between the sphere, then it will it will have a, a big weight, a large weight. Okay, if uh, on the contrary, if you have a, say for example, a, a regular uh, uh, tetrahedron, uh, then the the weight will be uh, quite small. Actually, it can be negative too. Okay, so each cell has a weight, and then the cell, what they can do, they can distribute uh, their weight among nearby sphere. What does it mean, nearby sphere? It's uh, you have some constant, and you can give weight to the sphere which are within distance, uh, no more than this constant. Okay, it's uh, very important because you want to have some. Uh, transform your global problem into a local problem in order to, to tackle it. Okay, so to be a bit more precise, the, the weight of a cell R is something which is at most, so some constant alpha times the volume of the cell minus what I, I write uh, cob hot air, it is, um, it is a part of the cell which is covered by the sphere of your packing. Okay, so uh, the less uh, the less uh, your cell is covered, the largest is its weight. I have, uh, as I told it. Okay, so this is the weighting rule. Or no, what is a local density inequality? Uh, it's a lower bound on the total weight received rece uh, by any sphere. Okay, so a, the, oh. imagine the, all the cells, they give their weight to the sphere. So each sphere can receive weight from uh, many cells, not too many because uh, the weight cannot uh, travel uh, arbitrarily far. Okay, it's uh, only for a nearby sphere. And what you want is that uh, to, to compute a lower bound on the total weight that each sphere gets. So Thomas, how can the weight be negative? It's like, like the number, or they can ne be negative. 
I, I mean, I, I agree. Maybe the term is not the best one, but uh, uh, it's the Lagarias terms. But yeah, the weight can be negative. But it's like this. Because, okay, maybe a, a better answer is uh, actually the weight, it's compared. It's a comparison between the, the the density of the cell and the density you want to probe. So if you are less dense than the target density, uh, you will have a positive weight. But if you are more dense, you will have a negative weight. It means you will give negative weight to the sphere. It means that the sphere should uh, give you positive weight if you prefer. Is it okay? I'm channeling the chat, so I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, oh. Okay. And so there is a proposition in the in the paper of Lagarias is that uh, if you have a lower bound beta on the total weight that any sphere gets, which is different, so it's uh, some detail. It's different to minus the volume of each sphere. Uh, so for, forget this. But just if you have a lower bound on the weight, then you have an upper bound on the density. And I can give a proof of this. OK, I miss a slide here. So it's just a proof sketch. Uh, why is it a sketch? Because if you want to do it properly, you have to consider a square uh, to compute this, to consider uh, to, to bound the, the thing which happens on the boundary, and then to take the limit when the size of the square goes to infinite. Uh, but I will take some. Uh, some liberty on I sum uh, over the wall space. Uh, the idea is, is, uh, is really the same, it's just more simple to write. Okay, the proof sketch is just, the, the principle is that the weight that the cell gives is equal to the weight that the sphere gets globally. Okay, just an exchange of sphere, all the, the weight goes from cells to sphere. So it is what uh, I've written here. You sum over all the cells the weight of the cell, uh, which it gives to, to the sphere of the packing. And since you, you know that uh, each sphere uh, gets at, at least beta, you can bound from uh, below by uh, the sum over all the sphere of your packing uh, times beta. OK? So this equality, inequality is just the, uh, the weight given by the cells equals the weight received by the sphere. Okay, and then you, you, just, uh, you just have to, to compute like this. Uh, it is equal to, so you sum over all the sphere of the packing, so it's equal to the volume of the packing uh, minus the part of the packing which is covered by the sphere. On a beta is less than more than a beta times the number of a sphere in your packing. Okay, so again, you have to take a large square and to, to compute on this large square, not on the infinite plane. But... Then the, the coverage, the part of your, the plane which is covered by the packing, it's just the number of sphere in your packing times the volume of each sphere. It's because uh, of that that the volume comes. And you can just uh, make a, some uh, some little calculus, and you get that here it's the number of sphere times the volume, that is the part covered of the space, divided by the volume of the packing. So on the left, it's the density of your packing, and it's less to than uh, this quantity, which depends on alpha and beta and the volume of each sphere. Okay, so it's just a really a quite simple transformation. If you have a lower bound on your density, then you have an upper bound. Uh, if you have a lower bound on the weight that each sphere gets, you have an upper bound on the density of the packing. Okay, the point is that uh, uh, now uh, all is local. The weight are given locally, the sphere gets their weight locally. So maybe it can be easier to, to get an upper bound. So does this proof sketch work exactly for packings in a, into a compact torus? Into what? A compact torus. Uh, what, what, for example? Do you have an example? I don't really understand. Uh, 
Maybe I can ask Ed Crane to unmute. So, so if you were working with periodic packings, yes, instead, then you could think of it as a packing in a torus, and the proof you gave works exactly. Yes. You don't yes, need to take a limit. If, if you're on the torus, it's already already local. So my problem is to to to, re, to reduce the problem from from the whole plane to something. Uh, to some local inequality. Okay. Or you have to consider tories whose size can be arbitrarily large, but then there is no real difference with the plane. Okay, the, the, more or less the, the claim is that if it is local, then it is easy. You, you all know the, this uh, problem of the certain sphere. You have a, a sphere in R3. How many sphere can you put which uh, touch the central sphere. Okay, so there is different demonstration, but uh, I will come to, to to this later. But I want to to say that if you have a computer, uh, I can write uh, for you a program of maybe ten lines which proves this theorem. Very simple program which proves the theorem that it is no no possible to put certain sphere which touch another sphere. Because it is a local problem, then I, I can do all the possibilities and it proves eventually the theorem. Okay, of course, the problem is that it can, it can be a bit long and you can, be, you can die before the end of the proof, but uh, it will eventually prove your theorem. Okay. So it is a general formalism for localization, and I will give example on the, the previous case that we have seen. So consider again the case of one circle. So you have one circle in the plane, you want to show that the densest packing is uh, hexagonal compact packing. So th th there can be several other possibilities, but one possibility is this weighting rules. So you decompose your plane uh, with the Delaunay triangulation you define the weight of each cell, which is now a triangle, equal to uh, these things. That is, this is the optimal density times the volume minus uh, the coverture. Okay, so you have zero weight exactly if you are a triangle with a good density. If you are denser, you have a negative weight. If you are, uh, uh, I don't know the contrary, not that dense, uh, you have a positive weight. And each triangle R, R share its weight, say, fairly among its three circles. Then what we can prove, so it's a, it's a theorem, which is not very interesting because the, because the previous proof is more nice, but uh, you can prove it, uh, that the total weight received by any circle is non-negative. Okay, so you have a local density inequality with beta equals zero in, a, in the previous slide. Then you just apply uh, the previous bound, and you get that the density is at most uh, alpha, okay? Because it, you have here uh, alpha equal to pi over square root of 12 and beta equals zero. So you have your optimal bound, optimal because you know that uh, on the other hand, you can make a packing with this density, which achieves this density. Other example is one sphere in R to the three. So in a, in a first paper of a paper of uh, Thomas Hals in uh, 92, he introduced, he introduced the following weighting rule. So again, you have your sphere packing, you decompose the space, you use the Delaunay tetrahedralization. Each cell is a tetrahedron. Then you define the weight of any tetrahedron to be equal to, to these things. It is, uh, that is, you take for alpha some constant delta oct, which is actually the density in a regular octahedron where the sphere are all mutually tangent. Okay, so it's a, the density, there is an exact formula, but uh, I'm not very interested. You have some, uh, some, uh, some value. And then each tetrahedron shares its weight fairly among the, the four sphere, uh, which are centered on its vertices. And then he conjectures 
that the total weight received by a sphere is at least, okay, this quantity, it, it is beta in the previous slide. Okay, I, again, I don't care about the exact uh, value, but it's important to have the, the good density. Okay, so it was in, the, in, a, in a first paper in 92, but unfortunately uh, he was unable to, to prove this uh, the local density inequality. Maybe, uh, maybe it's true, but it's not clear. So instead he, he modified with uh, Ferguson's uh, weighting rule in a rather complicated way, but the spirit is more or less the same, but he, he modified it so that he can uh, prove the, the local density inequality above. And if you make the computation, like in the previous slide, you, uh, you get that the, you have an upper bound pi over two uh, square root of uh, 18. That is uh, the, the upper bound, which proves the Kepler conjecture. Okay, so it's a very uh, high level view of the Hall's proof. But the, the idea is really this, is to, you have a local inequality to prove, you want to reduce it to some, uh, uh, sorry, you have a global inequality, the density for any packing of the whole space, and you want to reduce it to the local inequality and try to prove it by, by some means. And how, how can you prove a local density inequality? So the point is that uh, since your regions, your cells are bounded and the weights are, are just given to nearby sphere, uh, then to compute the weight received by a sphere, remind that you want to, to show that each sphere get a, get a weight no less than some constant beta, then you just have to look around you. Okay, around you, it means on some, some compact set, uh, there is a, a compact set of possible configuration. You have to describe the, the coordinate of each uh, possible neighbor sphere and region which uh, gives you weight. It's, it can be huge, and actually it is huge uh, often, uh, but uh, there is a finitely many co coordinates. They, uh, they run in a compact set, so all in all, you have just a function of a compact set and you have to prove that this function is more than uh, the beta that you want. And when you have a compact set, you are very happy because you can use your computer uh, to work uh, for you. So I, I don't know uh, if you are familiar with this. I, I assume you are not. A dichotomy, I assume you are familiar, but I mean uh, interval arithmetic. Um, so, what is the, uh, how do the, the work, the proof, the proof on the computer? And it is, again, it is uh, like uh, the proof uh, by Hals, uh, but it's uh, oversimplified, of course, but the, the, the idea is the same. You want to check over a whole compact set that your function is, uh, say, positive or more than beta. What you do, you, you apply your function to the compact. So, on, on most of the, the actual uh, computer uh, software, you have uh, interval arithmetic, which do exactly like uh, this. If you apply a function of an interval or a compact set, then just it gives you a, a set which includes at least all the possible results. Okay, it's, uh, it's based like, uh, if you, I don't know if you apply a, a some uh, sinus function to some interval zero one. Uh, for sinus, you are you are uh, integer series, and you can find bound on the the remaining part that you don't compute. So you can give a an an interval which contains all the possible answer of sine of sine of x for x in some interval. And it is exactly what does the computer here. So you can get a, a big set. Uh, when you start at the beginning, your compact set is uh, huge. So you just apply stupidly your function to your compact set. You get, uh, okay, you, uh, the weight of your, the sphere uh, can be uh, minus something uh, very small to something very big. So you have no very information and you cannot conclude. Okay, it's what I have, uh, I have written here. If the, 
if the largest value, which is in the intervals that you get, is lower than beta, okay, I'll remind that uh, you want to show that uh, f of k, f of x is uh, f of x is uh, larger than beta for any x in k. So, so if you find some case like this, you can uh, stop and say uh, it's not true. On the other hand, if you find that any value, if your interval, it means any value of f of x for x in uh, k is larger than beta, then you can uh, stop. You are happy. It's satisfied over the k. Otherwise, otherwise, it uh, it means that uh, you have uh, the two interval intersect. It means you don't have uh, enough precision. Your interval k is too big, too big, and the the value of uh, f of x over k uh, can be so uh, range in a too too large interval. So you cannot conclude. You just cut your compact set in smaller compact sets and you recursively apply on each compact set. Okay, to increase the, the, the precision, your compact set uh, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually uh, you find a point where, where it's not satisfied or you show that it is satisfied on, on your small compact set and uh, the recursion goes over all the, the possible decomposition. Okay, so in, in theory, it's, uh, it's quite easy. You do just recursion dichotomy and you can verify your inequality on the whole compact set K. There is a small problem is that uh, if your local density is optimal, that is if the, usually you want to have not an upper bound, but to, to have the best upper bound, it means that there exists a packing with the density you want to prove uh, it is a, an upper bound. Then it means that uh, in your compact set, it will be some point for which uh, the local density inequality is an equality. And here it's a problem of in interval arithmetic. You will always compute, uh, you will have an, an interval which is smaller and smaller and smaller, which contains x. You compute the possible values, which gives you another interval which contains beta inside. So this interval will always intersect the interval uh, around beta. So you cannot conclude. You don't know if you are larger, smaller, or equal to beta. So uh, if you have such a problem, you will have an infinite recursion in your problem. Uh, then you have to be a bit clever, but not, not that. It means that on a small neighborhood or your optimal packing, you must show that uh, your, the derivative of, of your function are increasing. You can show it again by uh, by the same process with dichotomy on uh, interval arithmetic, so that uh, when you make the recursion, when you you get an interval which is small enough, so you are on a, a subinterval of a, of its uh, this v of x. That is, you know, by other argument that uh, this cannot be uh, less than beta. Then you just stop your recursion. You are happy. Okay, so it's really the, the idea behind this. Uh, for, for example, for the certain sphere, sphere problem, since there is no uh, possibility to put a certain sphere in contact with uh, another one, it will, uh, it means that there is no X in your compact set such that F of X equal beta. So you don't have to, to care about this uh, later problem. But in the proof of files, uh, you do. Okay, so it's a theory. In practice, you have two major problems. So the first problem I already mentioned is that it can be uh, a very long because if you look the, here at the program, you make a lot of recursive calls. And moreover, when you split your compact set, uh, if it is only an interval, you split it in two. But if you have two parameters, you split it in four and so on. But usually you have a lot of dimension. Uh, for example, for the Hulse problem, uh, it has been shown that um, you have to consider at most, uh, I don't remember exactly, I think it's 49 sphere around the, the, the central sphere. 49, you have three coordinates for each sphere. Uh, it means more or less uh, uh, the dimension of chi is, uh, is more than uh, 100, uh, is more or less 150. 
so at each recursive call you will uh, do a, a two to the uh, 150 recursive calls so of course it's not possible like this you you have to be more clever okay or to be more clever it's to to find better waiting words to lower the dimension of car or to lower the the, the depth of the recursion um or you you okay i won't go on the, the second point um but it is what uh, it's because of that that uh, hals cannot uh, uh, prove its uh, first uh, local density inequality um, and he, he had to change the weighting rules in order to make the computation uh, feasible okay so the first problem is that it can be quite long the second problem is that uh, i told you that uh, you can define weighting local rules uh, conjecture some local density inequality and try to prove it but maybe the, there is no guarantee actually that there exists local density inequality that can prove the optimal density. Uh, why? Because it assumes that the, the weight of the cells can be uh, given to nearby spheres so that you, you, you manage to, to, the, or to say, to, to average the, the density on some uh, bounded part of your uh, Euclidean plane. But you could imagine some packing so that, uh, for example, aperiodic packing, you have an aperiodic packing of the plane, it has some density. And if you try to, to look on each part, uh, then it will be uh, either more dense than the average density or less dense, but you will find another part which can, which can be very far, uh, such that uh, if you take both of them, it makes the average density. Okay, maybe there is no bound on the, the radius uh, you need to, to consider to, to get the, the good average density. Okay, so it was uh, the general presentation of localization problem. Uh, okay, I, I know that maybe it's not very clear, but uh, I can advise this paper by Lagarias, it's uh, only 40 pages. That means uh, it's uh, much shorter than the Hals proof. And uh, it's, uh, I think, quite clear about the, the, the idea of giving weight from cells to nearby spheres. And now in, the, in the, my second part of the talk, I want to consider a particular localization that I played with uh, in the last uh, few years, it is the uh, M localization. So the M localization, it is a weighting rule as we have seen the, the, the general definition of some example. So I've seen the name uh, introduced by Tom Kennedy in, in a paper in uh, 2004. Uh, he, he say in this paper that the name is quite common in some some part of physics, uh, I don't know. Uh, there are many ideas uh, which were already present in previous paper by uh, Alader Tepes. And uh, we had to, to make some improvement in order to, to, to prove what we, we wanted to prove uh, with this. And uh, I will explain it in the next slide. And what I want to emphasize about M localization, it, uh, it is that it was designed to prove maximal density uh, of triangulated packing in the in the plan, plane. So what is a triangulated packing? It's like this: you have a packing of the plane by circles, uh, and you want that uh, the contact graph that is you you connect the, by an edge the center of the disk which are tangent. You want that this contact graph uh, is a triangulation. Okay, in other way, all the, the, the holes in, the, in between the circle are uh, triangles. So let's consider first uh, who are the triangulate, triangulated uh, packing. So first the binary case, when you have only true radius of disk, so they have been classified by uh, the same Tom Kennedy. Uh, will prove that there are only 
nine different uh, sides which uh, allows a binary packing of the plane. So here you have the, the, the nine, uh, nine sides and an example of packing which, uh, for each size. They are all periodic, so uh, I describe a fundamental domain uh, by a parallelogram in the picture. Okay, so this is uh, the binary packing. Uh, then the ternary packing you can lo look at, and it uh, we prove that there are uh, okay 164 why not size which allow a triangular ternary packing. So I, I put some example here. And the question, of course, is okay. Do the packing? Can you prove that the packing are the densest one? Okay, the dense, densest means that you can you fix uh, the size of a disk. So, for example, you consider uh, the the top uh, right one, and you want to show that this packing, the precise packing which is uh, here depicted, uh, maximize the density among all the packing of the plane uh, by the, the two sides of circles. Okay, so the, all the packing it means uh, there can be some aperiodic packing, so whatever you want. But you want to show that the density is no more than the density of this packing. And same for the other. Okay, so the first theorem is for a binary triangulated packing that is with a true disk. Uh, so it was the first paper, the two paper by uh, Alada Epes. And uh, in the, the paper, he proved uh, six cases. Then Kennedy. Uh, added one case and uh, we add uh, the two last case so that the, the final result is that for all the sides which allow a triangulated binary packing, the density is maximal for uh, a triangulated binary packing, actually for the, the one which are here depicted. Okay, so you, we have nine examples of uh, optimal density uh, plus, of course, the hexagonal compact packing uh, in two dimension. And uh, we have uh, spoken about the Kepler conjecture in three dimension. And there is also there are two examples in dimension eight and 24 that I want detail here. And as far as I know, is uh, more or less, no, is the only case I, I know. Okay, so this is for binary packing. Uh, now for ternary packing, um, Daria Pchelina, uh, who is a PhD student with me, uh, have um, tried to, to show that they are all the densest one. And uh, what is the result uh, she gets is that, uh, okay, there are nine of them which um, do maximize the density. Actually, this is the nine that I described here. So I, I think that the talk uh, of uh, Zhen Zhang tomorrow will speak Speak, uh, at least a bit uh, about the first one, but the other uh, maximize the density too. Okay, so nine out of uh, 164. Among the, the other ones, there are some uh, some case we, which fails. So I write here 15 plus uh, 18 plus 6 because it's different. Uh, uh, different way to fail in, in some sense. So consider the first packing. So this is the densest triangulated packing uh, with the size of sphere among the triangulated packing. Okay, so it's a good candidate to be the densest among all the possible packing. Unfortunately, it is not because you can add, uh, you see the, the small red uh, disc is uh, quite uh, small, so you can add it in the, the holes, the other holes like this. Of course, you increase the density, but if you look uh, a bit closer, you see that the disks that you added, they, uh, they can wiggle a bit in the hole. That is, you get a packing which is no more triangulated. Okay, so for this case, for this size of disk, the densest packing is not the uh, is not triangulated. It's not the, the the one that you wanted maybe to to be the densest one. 
So the second case is another uh, another situation. So this is a, a, a triangulated packing with three sides of disk, but uh, it is a, a bit um, stupid packing because what I have did, I've just take uh, two different binary packing and I have combined them together. Okay, if you look this, uh, you can see that is nothing but this one and this one together. Okay, the red and the blue uh, circle never touches. So when you do this, okay, you have a triangulated ternary packing, but usually uh, it comes from two binary and there is one of the binary, which is the densest one. And if you look uh, for the densest packing, uh, up, it will be the binary uh, which wins. But at least the densest packing is a triangulated packing. It is not ternary, but it is uh, a triangulated packing. And the last example is uh, maybe more uh, uh, more original. So here it is the densest triangulated packing with the three sizes of this. Okay, so he, he is, uh, it is saturated. You cannot add a red disk in the in the other holes because they are too large, and it doesn't come from uh, from binary packing. So the question is uh, why it, uh, it can be not uh, of maximal density. And the answer is that with the size of, of sphere, you can do this. That is, you just make a hexagonal compact packing with the largest disk. And the smallest one is small enough to fit in the holes of this uh, compact packing. That is not quite obvious here, but here it, it does. If you look closer, you see that it, fit, it fits in the holes, but uh, you can again wiggle a bit, so you uh, get a packing which is not triangulated. Okay, so for, for all the other cases, uh, it doesn't work. That means that you, you wanted to prove, I wanted for, for, uh, to prove that uh, the, uh, the triangulated packing are always the densest one. And the answer is no, you, you need to add some further hypothesis. And for all the remaining ones, out of the 164. Uh, unfortunately, the M localization, which is as, again a specific weighting rule, does not allow to conclude. So either you have uh, to find a, another localization, uh, or maybe there is no, uh, no good localization. I don't know. So what is the M localization? So I have 10 minutes left, right? So I will try to, to, to define the M localization. So you have a packing of the plane by uh, circles and you take a triangulation of, uh, of the centers of the uh, disk, what is called, uh, which is called the Feges-Molnar triangulation. I will define it in the, in the next slide. So it's for the moment, just uh, some specific triangulation. Each triangle which have a, will have a weight uh, uh, the optimal density that you want to prove uh, times the volume minus the, the part which is called red. Uh, and you, the way uh, each triangle distributes its weight among the, the three circles around uh, is a bit complicated. But here the point is that at least it's very local. You just distribute the weight among the three circles uh, which are which intersects the triangle. And the local density inequality that uh, we want to prove is that uh, the weight received by any circle is non-negative, okay? Because uh, since here we have take this constant, it will be prove that uh, your density is at most uh, this, uh, this target density. Okay, so this is uh, the general framework of the M localization. Uh, no, I have to define wh what is the FM triangulation on how uh, you, you distribute the weight. So FM triangulation is just um, a small generalization of the Delaunay triangulation. You define the cell of a circle. It's again the point which are closer to this circle to another circle. The point is that uh, since now you have circle of different sizes, uh, the cells are no more polytopes. 
here uh, between circle of different sizes, you have an, uh, an uh, arc of hyperbola. But uh, never mind, it's more or less a Voronoi diagram. So you can take the dual, you have uh, some triangulation. So forget the white circle, for, uh, forget them. Uh, I won't uh, give details. So you get a triangulation, and this is the Feges Molnar, so FM for Feges Molnar triangulation, uh, which is also called, as far as I know, the weighted Delaunay triangulation. Okay, so you have a tri just uh, to, to, to make it clear, just a, a Delaunay triangulation, but uh, which is uh, which corresponds to cases where you have a disk of different sizes. So now more interesting is the weight distribution. Um, okay, I have only five minutes. So the first point is when you have a good triangle, a good triangle, I, I call this a tight triangle, is when your three circles are mutually tangent. So it's good because intuitively you have the feeling that it's quite dense. Then uh, the weight of this triangle uh, will be exactly uh, this uh, formula, and it will be. Uh, given to each of the three circle so you have an equation of uh, over the weight that uh, each uh, circle gets for the moment i, I don't know which weight they get uh, precisely i just know that the sum of the weight of the, the three circle is equal to the weight of the triangle and now uh, i want to add equation on the weight so that it uh, it work it works good with my uh, target packing. That is my triangulated packing that I want to show that it is the densest one. So I look in the, in the target packing and I'm especially interested in the case where you consider one circle, you consider all the circle around it. So each triangle here will give away to the, the red uh, circle. And what you want, you want to, to satisfy your local inequality. That is, you want to sum of the weight that the red circle get is non-negative. So it, it adds an inequality on the weight that each triangle gives to uh, this vertex. And actually, since you want to show that it is a densest packing, it's not an inequality, it's an equality. You want to show that the sum of the weight is equal to zero. Okay, so you look all the possible config configuration which appears in your target packing, you get equation on your VI, the, the weight of uh, each given by each triangle to each circle. Uh, and you, you choose a, a solution of this, uh, of this system of equation to define the, the, the way the weights are distributed. Okay, this is only for the tight triangle. That is when the, the disks are mutually tangent like this. For other triangles, when the disks are not tangent, or, for, uh, or yes, not tangent like this, for example, you make some uh, weight deviation like this. It means the, the weight that, uh, the, so I, I took the yellow circle here. The weight that the yellow circle gets in this case is equal to the weight that he, he, it gets here, plus uh, some linear, linear deviation uh, of the difference of angle here, alpha, minus uh, alpha star okay that is the more your triangle becomes different from the good triangle the higher will be the uh, its weight and you have some coefficient m for the deviation it's uh, when the name uh, m localization and it has to to satisfy some trade-off it must be big enough so that for any packing, if you look at uh, the sum of the weight uh, given to a, a given uh, circle, you want a, it is non-negative. Uh, so the higher M is, the higher are the weights given to this circle. So the, the, the highest is the probability to have something positive. But on the other one, you, you want to have M uh, small enough so that uh, the weight of each triangle uh, which is, uh, so each triangle gives uh, the weight uh, VI star. You want that the weight of each triangle is no more than uh, this delta star uh, volume of air minus covering of air. Okay, so you have a sort of trade-off and you, you have to, to seek for a good aim to satisfy this. 
the good point is that you have finitely many configuration around a circle to consider. You have a compact set of triangles because your, your triangles cannot be too, too long. They, are, they have to be rather compact, so the, the, the coordinates are bounded. So you can make a computer check to check uh, for which M uh, both uh, inequality holds. That is, you have lo your local density around each circle, uh, and you, uh, you, you don't take too much weight of uh, each triangle. Okay, so I have two 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 minutes. Uh, so this M localization worked uh, uh, good for the binary uh, uh, binary triangulate packing. This one for some uh, ternary uh, packings, not for all. So some some of them uh, it is uh, normal. But uh, for uh, for most of them, for uh, for hundred uh, yes, 60, 16 of them, uh, you cannot conclude uh, for the M localization because if you make your computer search, uh, it, it tells you that no, I cannot find a good M and good uh, VIs to to satisfy what you want. But it doesn't mean that uh, there is no other weight distribution which uh, could work. It just means that your method uh, doesn't work. Okay, so the question is, can you improve the method to, to work? I will skip this. I will skip this. Uh, and okay, I will just give a, an idea of this. So I have told it's designed for triangulated packing, but actually if you think a bit about this, there is no real reason why uh, it, it suits uh, particularly for triangulated packing. It could be, it, it could work for any other packing. Uh, the main problem in the, in the M localization is that uh, the way you distribute the weight is rather local. It's not that local as in the, the case of the, the first case we consider the hexagonal compact uh, packing, but it's quite local. You give him to, to the, the three circle here uh, in the triangle with some condition about the, the, the neighbor's circle of, um, of each circle. But maybe you, for some case, you will have to, to distribute the weight a bit farther. But uh, the farther you distribute the weight, the, 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 the hardest is to, to prove your inequality because the dimension of your space uh, increases. And uh, again, uh, you are not even sure that uh, there is some finite radius so you can uh, you can stop at. And I will just yes conclude with this uh, with graph. Uh, so this is for binary packing. Uh, this is the maximal density for each radius r. So here in the abscissa uh, is the radius the yes yeah, the ratio between the true circle. So when the ratio is equal to one, it means you have only one side of disk and we know that the density is uh, pi over square root of uh, 12. Uh, this is uh, more or less uh, this value. Okay, the red curve is the Florian bounds. Uh, re remember it is, a, it is a density in a triangle with one large disk and two small disks. So it gives a rather good bounds on the, for any size of disk. But we know that it is not a tight bound. This is a, never it's a, it is a rich because you cannot tie the plane with this triangle. And the, in a, in pink, it, it's the curve that I I got uh, today. I'm working on on this uh, the last time. It's a upper bound that you get with the M localization. Okay, so you are, actually you don't know the optimal density, so you just try with some density. Does it work? It means uh, does the M localization find a good uh, way to distribute the weight and a good M, so you can get an upper bound uh, thanks a uh, local density inequality. And I, I got this uh, curve like this. So in particular, you see you see that at some point it uh, meets the, the density pi over square root of twelve. So here it's optimal, okay? You can at least do this density on no more. And then uh, in blue, I put the non-example of, uh, of dense packing. 
basically it it looks like uh, like peaks and the, the the top of each peak is a very good packing typically it's, uh, most of them are uh, triangulated binary packing and then you just uh, you you just uh, uh, modify them in order to not uh, lose too much density and you you get good packing and uh, it is a lower bound on your density so if you look like this you can see for example that uh, uh, so here around this point uh, it looks uh, like the, the upper bound and the lower bound uh, are uh, they meet uh, so on the pictures it looks like they are equal but there is some small difference it needs to be proved but it looks like you cannot do better than the non-bound on the other one and if you look uh, for example here at this point here is the lower bound which is now which is only very very slightly uh, higher than the hexagonal compact packing but the upper bound is much higher. So maybe because the M localization is too bad, maybe because here there is a good packing that uh, no one knows. Okay, I, I will stop here because uh, I already passed my time and uh, let a bit time for a question. Yeah, so thank you very much. Let's thank our speaker with the typical Zoom. <laughs> there we go. Very interesting talk. And maybe we have time for one uh, question or so, and then people can stay uh, if if you're willing to to chat during lunch. Yes, Ken. Uh, yes, thanks. Very nice. Um, you skipped a slide that um, had stereometry in it or something. Yes. Um, so I was wondering, uh, stoichiochemist, um, does the physical, the fact that in physical situations you seem to get densest packings, have you um, gotten any help from the physical world in figuring out how nature does this? Yes, there is uh, forces involved. So the, the main forces, so I you can show the, the first picture. Uh, so here it's what it is a uh, small nanoparticles that are it's, it's crystalline typically it's a gold or something like this and around uh, them yeah, there are some uh, ligands so, so some soft uh, chain like like a, like a soft shoulder and uh, on the on the one hand they uh, there's a soft shoulder they uh, they repulse but on the other hand you have the van der Waals force which uh, make them uh, uh, get uh, together. But I agree that uh, between Van der Waals force and the proof that uh, it, uh, it should maximize the density, uh, there is a gap. It, 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 I'm interested in this, but uh, I cannot, uh, I have no proof at all. But I've just uh, evidence it's like, if you look at the, the packings, so which have been really uh, obtained by, uh, by people who don't uh, care about uh, a good density or uh, algebraic ratio of disk. Uh, you get the hexagonal compact here. Then you get four binary triangulated packing. Uh, it, it looks uh, very, very well like the triangulated packing. And the last one is uh, one of the uh, 164 packing that uh, triangulated ternary packing that we get, for which we, we, we are not able to prove the density. Okay, so the answer it's, uh, like, it looks like, uh, yes, uh, physics uh, like uh, the denser structure. Uh, why, I don't really know, uh, except uh, there is Van der Waals force, but it's a big, uh, not uh, precise.